Hello, I'm Harvey Weissong. Uh, I am a United States veteran. I served with the 1st Battalion, 9th Marines in Vietnam in 1967 and 68 as a platoon leader. I was privileged to serve with wonderful people and I was witness to an incredible number of heroic events, heroic actions by men with steel spines. And I treasure those memories. I treasure those men. And everyone is effusive in their praise for the veterans. I am too, as far as their physical courage is concerned. But there are two kinds of courage. There's physical courage, there's moral courage, maybe there's something else, but those two come to mind. And I see a great disparity between physical courage and moral courage. Of the two, moral courage is much more rare and should be much more treasured. I recently discussed this with a friend of mine who is a retired commercial airline pilot. And I said, Daryl, why do you think this is? I mean, first, do you agree that moral courage is more rare than physical courage? And he did agree. I said, why do you think it is? He said, in cases of physical courage, you are entirely in the moment. Your focus is on what's happening right now. Is it a building on fire? Is it bullets flying? Is it whatever, a life and death situation, you don't think long term. You don't consider the long term consequences. But in cases of moral courage, people do think in the long term. They think about what will happen. Will I be sued? Will my family members disapprove? Will my church members, will my boss disapprove? Will I be mocked for this position that I hold. Well, it's the people that stand up with moral courage that are the great heroes, the greater heroes. We've got great heroes. One case that has always mystified me until I spoke to my friend Darrell is about a Supreme Court decision that was handed down in November of 1942. It was called Wickard v. Filburn, and American men were fighting on every continent and on every ocean of the world against tyrants. The war had been going on for nearly a year at that point, and it was gonna go on for three and a half years more. Well, anyhow, the farmer had been accosted by the United States Department of Agriculture for his violation of interstate commerce. He had grown too much wheat, I believe it was. He took one portion of the wheat and used it to feed his livestock. He took another portion of the wheat and used it to feed his family. And he took the remainder of the wheat and used it for seed the next season. But the Supreme Court found that he had engaged in illegal interstate commerce. He had produced more than he was allotted. I said, well, how could that be? He didn't engage in commerce because he never sold so much as a grain of the wheat. Not only did he not engage in interstate commerce, he didn't even cross the county line with it, let alone a state line. He didn't cross his property line with the wheat. So how on earth could non-commerce that doesn't leave the property become interstate commerce? Well, it's an affront to reason. But they said that his actions, they affected the price of wheat in interstate commerce. That's utter nonsense. And anyone with common sense knows that. So while our men and women were busy all over the earth supposedly fighting tyranny, the United States Supreme Court handed down a decision that made every transaction in the United States a matter of interstate commerce, something that had never been considered before. When the soldiers, airmen, sailors, Marines, 
Coast Guardsmen all returned home after World War II, what were they looking to do? Well, they'd been gone for years. They wanted to get married. They wanted to have families. They wanted to get their jobs going. They had business plans. They had dreams. And they got going on it. And they tolerated these big government decisions that were destroying our society. They were heroes for what they did in combat. They were to be condemned for not regulating their own government when they got home. But it's understandable because my generation that served in Vietnam did the same thing. We came home and got to work. We tried to build businesses, profitable careers, and we were asleep at the switch while these corrupt countrymen of ours wormed their ways into high positions in academic circles, in government positions, in all sorts of positions of influence. We've got uh, a lot of veterans who've just gone back to their normal lives, and it's time to wake up, smell the coffee, and it's time to answer another call and fight this degenerate movement that has taken over this country. It's time for moral courage, not physical courage. Get back into action. Face not enemy guns, but face the political correctness. Face the traitors to this country who are trying to destroy our constitution, our way of life. Face them. Let's whip them this time.